Hello, loves. I am Louise Eddington, the Cosmic Owl from Cosmic Owl Astrology, and I am a wisdom weaver who weaves the uh, messages from the stars, um, including tarot and various other things, and also all the many, many things I study and learn. <laughs> so, yes. Um, I am always taking in information and everything I learn, I try and integrate to pass on to you. But anyway, I also write on Substack daily. So I do a daily energy report and I've now created also a wisdom weaving session, um, a section on Substack for more general blog posts. And, you know, this is somewhere I'm going to grow. YouTube and Substack are kind of my main places. So if you would follow me, subscribe, um, you know, Substack is free or there's an optional paid support. Um, paid supporters get the draft blogging of my books and they will get some of the more personal wisdom weaving posts. But I have great plans for all of this. So you might want to step on over there and, you know, you can join in as much as you like or not and just get the daily reports. And the thing I love about Substack is that it has an amazing app. So you can just go and read it on the app or you can get e a daily email with the posts. You get to choose how you get the information. <sighs> so on that note, here we are. We are heading into another week and this is the weekly forecast. And this is another week of change. Mercury will move into Gemini and join. First we have the Sun, then Venus, then Jupiter moving. And now Mercury is going to move in. This is going to be Gemini overload. G uh, Jupiter moved in for the first time in 11 years for a year-long journey. I will link to my video about that year-long journey with all the aspects um, on this so you can watch that to get an idea of what's coming for the year ahead and the last time that Jupiter was in Gemini as well just to give you a flavour um, but we also have the last quarter moon and we have a couple of really big Mars aspects and before Mercury moves into the sign of Gemini we have a really big Mercury aspect so Let's dive into the week ahead and stay around till the end because I have three cards for the week too. So, and also it helps my YouTube algorithms if you stick around and watch to the end. So, and please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. I do answer all comments, not always immediately, but I get to them eventually. So here we are, we start the week, May the 27th, early with the moon now waning in the sign of Capricorn, which is very determined and disciplined and all about building and achievement and boundaries. Um, I wrote about this already on my Substack, but we start the week early um, in Eastern time. I, I can only pick one time zone, so adjust for your own time zone. The aspects are happening at the same time everywhere, even if you're in a different time zone, if you see what I mean. Like this moon series conjunction will still be happening at 5.01 a.m. in um, the UK. So you just need to move it to where you are. I'm not even in this time zone, but anyway. They and also they, you know, the aspects, you know, last a little while. So just take the um the overall picture. So yeah, we start the week with the moon in Capricorn, which is nicely grounding, nicely steady, helping us to step into this uh Gemini overload energy that's coming. Um it starts to build this week. You'll see it as we move forward. OK, but as if having the sun and Venus and Jupiter and Sedna in Gemini was not enough already. But thank you, moon. But I'm not going to go through all the lunar aspects as usual um, because I write about those in my Substack blog. So the main aspects on this day are that Pluto over here 
is trying to black moon Lilith. And you can see that this is also making a trine to, um, to Jupiter that's just moved in and Sedna. Sedna with the 11,406 year orbit has just moved into Gemini for the first time since all those years ago when we moved from being hunter gatherers to being, um, you know, creating farming and communities and cities. So this is going to be a very big change in the paradigm that we live in. And this is all in air signs. And Black Moon Lilith is about shame and vulnerability and being left out. She was the original wife of Adam. Pluto is also about digging in deep to our shadow, but also about finding our inner gold. So this is a big air grand trine that we start the week with, even though um, we use the uh, true Black Moon Lilith that bobs back and forth quite a lot. This is a lot of thinking, a lot of ideas, a lot to process. So I'm very grateful that the moon is in Capricorn to help us stay on track and steady. But later on May the 27th, um, well, Jupiter will first join Sedna for the first time. Um, and then, you know, we'll never come back here again for another 11 years. And Sedna's going to be in the sign of Gemini till I think 2044 or something, but a long time, a bit longer, actually, I think. So this is big change, big change in perceptions, big change in ideas. I'm already seeing a ramping up of, shall we say, conversations on on social media and people getting a little bit more debatey, a little bit more kind of argumentative. But it's Gemini is your voice. This is time to find your voice and really speak up for you. OK, but later on May the 27th, 4.44 p.m. to be precise, uh, the moon will move into Aquarius and join Pluto and activate that grand trine. And at the same time, Venus over here will actually trine Black Moon Lilith, or rather Black Moon Lilith will move quickly to um, five degrees Gemini and trine Venus and then trine the sun as well. So we've got a lot of thinking about women, women's rights, our relationships, and how we are relating to each other. So that whole debate about the bear versus man, the um, Harrison Butker debate with Eddie Vedder also speaking up for women is just ongoing. It's not going away. And I think, you know, it's important that these conversations come up. So anyway, so, you know, I'm thinking I need to bring up some blockers to stop me getting involved in debates with random people and really kind of think about who I'm talking to. But anyway, so the last main aspect on May the 27th is Mercury in Taurus, which is also I'm very grateful for, for this Gemini influx, that while we're settling into it, with Jupiter coming into Gemini, Jupiter expanding everything. I'm so grateful that Mercury is in an Earth sign too, that keeps us rooted and grounded in our body. However, things are about to change, so we'll see. <laughs> but Mercury late on May the 27th will come up and sextile Saturn, and Saturn is the... Um, died for Capricorn. So it's more earthly energy, but this is really tuning us into letting go of more of those limiting beliefs, but also having trust and faith that we are going to be okay. Now then, on to um, Tuesday. Tuesday, May the 28th, begins really early in the morning, actually, with some Mars action. And this is not the biggest Mars action that we've got, but let's start there. Mars is going to actually square Ceres, retrograde Ceres in Capricorn. And if you think about Aries and Capricorn, they're both uh, cardinal signs, which is initiating and starting new things. 
Mars is really strong in Aries because it's their home sign. Ceres in Capricorn is really, uh, she's now retrograde, still at her retrograde degree, 21 degrees. But she is looking at how the structures of our lives and the man-made laws and rules do not meet our needs. So we're looking at our, uh, and this could be your family structures, your home structures and the societal structures. So we're really kind of reviewing our needs met and unmet, how it's and how you can change the structures or help to change the bigger societal structures as well. But think about Aries and Capricorn too. Aries is the ram and Capricorn is the sea goat. And they are kind of both horned animals and they kind of lock heads a little bit. So there's going to be a little bit more contention this week um, in a few ways. I'll talk about that as we go. But uh, this is one of the big contentious things as well. And as well, Mars is still in a square to Vesta. So we start the week as well, really, with not only this air grand trine with lots of ideas and conversations and talk, but also with this cardinal T-square. And this is Vesta, the inner flame in the sign of cancer, which is safety and security. And our basis of security is being upended in a lot of ways, or we feel it's being upended. And so things are going to be a little bit uh, contentious and at loggerheads. But of course, the only thing you can do really is focus on you, who you are, and you on building your own basis of safety and security. That's all you can do in the moment, at least. I'm not saying... You can't do more in the bigger scheme of things. And the sun is also going to be trined by Black Moon Lilith. So we've still got this air grand trine going on as the moon moves through Aquarius for a couple of days. Okay, so on to May the 29th. The weekend's, by the way, going to heat up <laughs> as we go through the week. We start with this very grounded energy, but it's going to change. So anyway, so May the 29th. OK, so I'm just going to get my list of aspects to May the 29th. Here we go. So this T-square um, kind of gets stronger on to the Wednesday, in Wednesday as series moves off her retrograde station degree and opposes Vesta again. And you can see that this involves Hygieia as well, who is our preventative health asteroid. We're really kind of being asked to build and create something and structures and a life that really is rooted in creating our own basis of security. Now, to go to some a topic that I have been talking about over a long time, which is uh, kind of this therapeutic model of coming into center, the vagus nerve, polyvagal theory, all those kind of things, parts work, and building on the Aries eclipse, which keeps being, which has been activated by all of these planets, is saying you know, coming into your centre and knowing that that's the only real true basis of security is finding your centre and then creating your life and your community around it. OK, so, you know, this is uh, um, the uh, series opposition to Vesta is asking you to come into that inner flame as well that inner flame of sacred, knowing that, you know, you have it all within you to create. Now then, further on to May the 29th, Mercury is moving rather quickly, but Mercury is also going to join into this party with a trying to series. So we're thinking about um, our needs met and unmet, and how we can get rooted in our own values 
aspects and then Mercury will sextile Vesta as well. So Mercury, the mind, voice and thinking is bringing us down into that body again. Now then, later on May the 29th at 1.08 p.m. to be exact, Mars will meet Chiron. Now that's a big one. Um, because Chiron, if you remember, was exactly conjunct the April the 8th eclipse and has now moved from 19 degrees to 22 degrees. Mars is going to come up and meet at 22 degrees um, at 1.08 p.m. Eastern. So 22.09 Aries is the actual thing. 22 is a master builder number. Mars, as I said, very strong in Aries in their own sign is really kind of saying, you know, all right, so all our wounds and things have been up. You know, we keep finding more layers of trauma of the society that we live in, or we keep being activated by other things that are happening in the world that are kind of triggering the trauma. And Mars is on conjunct Chiron. That could cut into some more, could open up some wounds okay mars mars being surgery in some ways but this is where that quote you know about uh, the crack it is where the light gets in this is where you can look in and you can use the practices you've been building up to uh, you know deal with what comes up and and see it differently because then we're moving into all this gemini energy to be able to process it and say, I'm not letting that kind of rule my life anymore. I'm not letting it hold me. I am unlocking this key to healing. This is why I write all the time about, you know, the polyvagal theory and the parts work and all of those things, which, you know, there's a lot of books where you can do a lot of this work yourself as we create this new life having really kind of pulled back the veil and and re feeling into at this divine child within that really kind of is quite pure in many ways and then the last aspect on may the 29th is pluto um is going to well asteroid lilith is going to move back to one degree sagittarius and they're going to uh, um aspect each other and I call asteroid Lilith the talk to the hand Lilith. She's a bit like a rebellious teenager. This is in Sagittarius and Aquarius, sign, both signs of freedom and vision and the future. Pluto is digging into our shadow. I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I really think people in, in this world are going to find different and longer lasting ways to create a more equitable and fair world. And it's coming. And I do see it coming, um, even though it doesn't feel like it all the time. <laughs> OK, so on May the 30th, let's move on to Thursday. And uh, we have two aspects I will mention, but the main one being that the moon has now moved into Pisces. And... And Pisces is more emotional, more empathic. You'll see when I pull the cards that the week's going to get more emotional as, as time goes on. But the biggest aspect is that the, that Pisces moon not only squares Jupiter, squares Venus, and then squares the sun. And we move into the last quarter moon phase, which is the real inward phase. This is the shedding the releasing phase before the next new moon. So it'll be about a week till the next new moon after this. But all that Gemini, that perception changing thing, the voice, the community as well, and, and coming together and also separation. Uh, you know, Gemini is both separation and community. It's kind of like both. Um, and it's seen different perspectives, and and so on and so forth. Um, this is a, quite a um, emotional last quarter moon to my mind in Pisces with all of these aspects. 
this is going to go kind of you're going to feel inside them I know that everything's changing the sands are shifting and it feels uncomfortable but this is where you can tune in to your inner knowing and and really kind of tune into that and that basis of security again know that only you can kind of choose how you face this all right and then later on may the 30th this t square um, hygia comes up and squares series and then it starts to move apart this cardinal t square that is really kind of one of the primary um aspects or configurations for the week saying take action start new things create new things based on what you're learning okay so now on to oh, friday and things really pick up so at uh 1 a.m on um friday may the 31st venus day <laughs> as we're approaching the venus star point my webinar is still available for download if you if you would like to watch that. Um, and also, I would like to mention that um, my membership community, The Nest, you're not only going to get for the next uh, nine and a half month journey of Venus as the evening star of um, a, a, a lead star in Gemini. I'm going to teach my Nest community the Venus star point level one work over the next few months in a series of calls, adding to what I already offer in the nest. So check that out if you're interested to join us and become a member of that community. That will also take us into the next Venus retrograde heroines journey class, which nest members will get a considerable discount off. OK, so May the 31st. Early on, 1.54 a.m. Eastern, Mercury, the mind, meets Uranus, the higher mind. That's, in a nutshell, what they are. But this is, like, breakthrough moments and mental breakdown as well. I mean, it could be for some people. It depends how it's aspecting your chart. But this is, like, light bulbs, ahas, innovative ideas this is like being slapped around the head with a big four by four going, oh, Eureka, that's it. There will be people who have Eureka moments with this, especially if any, if they have anything around this degree. OK, or squaring it or opposing it. So squaring it would be Aquarius and Leo opposing would be Scorpio. But look at this, you can see that we have Pallas Athena about to move back to 24 degrees as well. And that's the wise owl. And she is the problem solver. She can see into the dark like owls and pull all the pieces together. She's a strategist. She is creative intelligence. Ideas. Wow. Off the charts with this aspect at the end of the week but of course we're building towards it okay as the week goes but not only that it's square to hecate my favorite <laughs> well hence the picture goddess of the crossroads but she's still in leo saying that the way forward is through the heart and she is almost at 28 degrees leo which is where Venus stationed retrograde last July the 22nd on Mary Magdalene's feast day. She's showing us that the way forward is through the eye of the heart, which is what Mary Magdalene's gospel says. And, you know, some of you know I've started a book club. This will be the first day of the book club. Um, it's full, by the way, um, um, for the book Mind Magic. One of the things I am loving about this book, which is the best book on manifestation I've read, I think, uh, possibly, and I've read a few, and I've studied kind of those laws and how you, what, how you really manifest the life you want in depth. Um, 
you cannot ignore the heart. Okay, it's not just all about think and grow rich. You know, the heart has to be involved. And that's why I think it's a fabulous book. So yes, see through the eye of the heart. So um, after that massive conjunction, this is just, your. this could be like, she's the goddess of the crossroads, okay? She is lighting a torch, showing us the way. This could be one of those days, especially leading up to it, where you have one of those moments of going, okay, I know where I'm going now. <laughs> All right. So, and this is in the sign of the body. So it is about mind, body and spirit. So it's about, again, coming into that wholeness. Okay, so um, later on that day, the sun and Juno also square off. Juno, the sacred contracts asteroid in this, in, um, excuse me, the sign of Virgo, the priestess, and the sign of holistic health and service and having, finding meaning in life. It's, it's kind of interesting because I've been going down major rabbit holes of uh, listening to um, uh, quantum theorists and um, also um, the latest one, I can't remember his name, but it's um, about simulation or um, this theory that it's that the world is kind of a game <laughs> and that a bit like the Matrix, which is like 25 years since the Matrix started. And I suddenly was like, as I'm walking along and I've been listening to all these books and I find, uh, you know, I get something out of most of them. I'm suddenly like, OK, so all these men are going that the answer is all like how we see things in the mind. Where's that heart? Where's the wholeness? Where's the mind, body, spirit in this? Uh, you know, I'm kind of like, OK, you're really interesting. You're kind of blowing my mind. And I do believe we can take change how we see things and how we respond and react is really important. I'm just getting the guy's name for you. But it's also there is this. All we know is this physical kind of self in in many ways. OK, what was his name? Riz. Oh. Rizwan. Um, Rizwan Virk. Okay. So they V I R K. And and he makes great sense, but I also think we're never going to understand how the cosmos works. And we are conscious beings that are conscious of ourselves. And really in this life, this is all we know. So I think instead of kind of trying to figure it all out, make sense of how it works, just deal with what where where we're at and um but i do also believe we can change our perspective but anyway i'm going on and on so one more aspect is that mercury will exactly oppose um palace athena as uranus is going to come up and oppose her too or or she's going to come back and oppose uranus so so much mental activity especially with gemini in there but this is in fixed signs. So this will be about kind of how you feel this in your body. This will kind of like could be, um, you know, where you kind of get this awareness deep in your gut. OK, so June the 1st on to Saturday and we're into June. So I'm going to change my calendar. And unsurprisingly, we get multiple kind of pictures for June because Mercury is about to head into Gemini and we're going to get the Gemini star point and the new moon in Gemini. It's uh, and Gemini is twins and multiples and many ideas and many split timelines, which is what this guy talks about on his I, I'm I'm listening on um the moment next level soul podcast to an interview with him he's he's been on other podcasts too if you want to go and listen he's, he's really interesting and you know i think all of these perspectives are valid so i'm not trying to say he's not right but anyway on to june the first 
Uh, the first aspect we get on June the 1st is that Jupiter and um, talk to the hand asteroid Lilith will oppose each other. And, you know, this is in truth and understanding and knowledge, higher truths, belief and Gemini, information, voice, changing perspectives. Well, you know, I think these voices that are kind of saying, um, petrify the patriarchy, to quote one of my t-shirts, I was kind of saying, we're done. We are not taking any more talk to the hand, asteroid Lilith. And this is not just about women. This is about other people that are being marginalized. And, you know, it's about the wealth gap. It's about um, how we work with each other in community, Gemini because Sedna is big changes in how we live as well. So that's how we start June the 1st. Then Venus comes up and squares the sacred contract asteroid uh, Juno. So we're really looking at our sacred relationships, but with each other and ourself, okay, our inner self. And uh, Chiron will come up as well and square um, Vesta. So we've still got this T-square here going on, all right, that I've talked about already. So I'm going to talk about it again. June the 2nd, <laughs> Sunday, and I'll take you into Monday because um, in case I don't get to this next Sunday, because we're going to Vegas to see Ringo Star. So I probably will not get to my week ahead forecast next week until Monday. So Mercury still going through, um, Taurus still in orb of, Ur of Uranus will square Hecate and Hecate is now where Venus station retrograde last July the 22nd, Mary Magdalene's feast day. It's reminding us as we finish with the Leo morning star, Venus star point, that we have to see through the eye of the heart and go into that cave of the heart, the inner child, what brings you joy, what lights you up. So that's where to focus your intention in this dark of the moon. But June the 2nd is a really big day for another reason, because Mars in Aries has about a 22 month cycle. Um, so it's been a while since he's been here, comes up to meet um, his sister, Eris, Aries, Eris, sorry, Eris in Aries, Mars and Eris. And um, Eris is, you know, she is the table shaker. She kind of shakes things up. She throws the apple in and reveals artifice. She pulls down picket fences. She can sometimes be seen as hateful, but I don't, I think she's just kind of hurt and angry. And she was said to roam the battlefields after battles and bathe in the blood afterwards. And I don't think she was worrying in the battle. I think this was a kind of howl or cry of kind of look how we treat each other when these are, you know, the, the leaders don't go in and, and fight hand to hand and battle. They leave it to the outsiders who get taken off to war and, and they go into the fight. So, you know, I, I know warfare's changed, but you get the idea. She is the outs, she represents the outsiders, okay, because she was not invited to the party of the elites. And so it, this is angry energy. I think there could be, you know, people who feel really left out could be like, I've started kind of starting exploding a little bit. I'm um, going, I've had enough. Can, um, combine that with Jupiter opposing asteroid Lilith. Also, if you look at this, Mars is going to come up to Aries at 25 degrees. This is in a quincunx with Pallas Athena. She's in Scorpio, which is about seeing into power games and manipulation and where we've been manipulated. I don't know whether we'll get 
complete answers from this, but there's going to be, again, some major ahas around this and with this Mars conjunct Eris. And this is taking place, the exact conjunction is 5.17pm next Sunday. So, but we're going to feel it building. So I don't know what's going to come out um, in the news around something about outsiders and being left out and people exerting control over others, but something is. And at the same time, later on June the 2nd, on at 8 12 pm jupiter is going to trine pluto in air signs again the mind more mind activity and look deep into the shadows and aquarius is the sign of humanitarianism the people the future as well um aquarius is more of an egalitarian side it does have an authoritarian side though by the way and you know, extreme socialism can be authoritarian as well as we saw in communism. But this is diving deep into how do we look at things differently and create something different. OK. Um, and then Mercury on June the 2nd at 11.57 p.m. will reach the last degree of Taurus and sextile Neptune. So this is tuning into the collective and listening with your sense of rootedness, listening to what's going on and having some faith that we can change. We can be the change we want to see in the world. So on to Monday, as I said, I'll go into Monday because um, I won't be back till late on Monday too from Vegas. So Mercury moves into the sign of Gemini at 3.36 a.m. In fact, let me let me just get that for you. Eastern, as I said. So Mercury joins <laughs> Sedna, Jupiter, Venus and the Sun in the sign of Gemini. The Gemini star point is on June the 4th. Then we have a Gemini new moon on, Ge on June the 6th. Next week's going to be Gemini overload supreme. And Mercury is the guide for Gemini. Mercury is said to be rule Gemini. Uh, this is where perspectives will really start to change, especially building on the aspects we've had this week okay what we've learned the ahas what comes up with this jupiter uh, sorry with this mars eris conjunction and the mars chiron conjunction you know this it feels like i've had enough we have to change and then we also have to talk to each other we have to do things differently all right so this will apply at all kind of levels and be, you know, it could be in your local community for you. It could be you finding your voice in an area that's just not working for you and speaking out more about it. Um, anyway, it's it's going to be very interesting. Now, the first aspect we get is that Mercury will conjunct Sedna at 9.35 a.m., and then um, later that day, oppose asteroid Lilith and really be in a conjunction with Jupiter, which is not going to happen till June the 4th. But really, this is all so close together. This is like we have to make major changes about how we live and how we treat each other and how we live on Earth. And this, it could not be bigger with Sedna being there, again, I, you know, she was last here at the end of the Ice Ages, at the start of the Neolithic Age. And, and so this is about new invention, new ideas, new ways of looking at things, listening to lots of different perspectives and making your voice heard. It's just huge, to be quite honest. And next week is just going to be wild wild gemini energy now if you have 
any anxiety or any um, uh, ADHD like me, <laughs> this could be the next week. You know, you could be all over the place. So this is where I'm going to go back to. You must do your self-care and ground and get out in nature and walk because next week's going to be wild and building up to it. So if you're not already got some grounding activities that work for you and the self-care activities that keep you on that straight and narrow, start doing them. Prepare for the next week. Because by the end of the week, you can also see that the moon has moved into Taurus, which is the body, luckily. But but we are in the dark of the moon because we're heading towards the moon. So it's very in the, the whole energy is, is just um, really in inward. OK, so I am going to show you the cards and then get this off to you. So really all the kind of insights are ahas and kind of shocks and things that you might get this week are leading to a very big week the week after okay so one of your decisions could be to come join the nest <laughs> and incidentally um you know the nest gets all other kinds of benefits and uh, next year, I am going to move my membership from where it is now and change it slightly. But this next Venus, because I usually work with Venus cycles, which is why I'm going to teach the Venus star point cycle, is um, is what the birthing of the next thing. But I'm going to you know add this in for this next period, nine and a half months. Okay, so the King of Pentacles, these are the cards for the week. We start with a lovely earth sign with uh, Pentacles, with the King, which really is about strong male energy, but strong earthly energy um, and very grounded. This is, but this is material power as well, though, and success and stability. So it could mean you finding very feeling like that sense of accomplishment and um and quite secure material materially and that you found the um way to build whatever prosperity means for you and you should share it with others and you should be proud of your hard work but it could also mean revealing where others have been more successful and kind of looking at them and seeing what their skills were, how they felt so accomplished. This feels, again, really good for studying a book on manifestation. But anyway, so even if you haven't come into my um, um, membership, that's fine. And it's full, uh, not into the book club. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the book club. I didn't want too many in it, and I'm doing it to practice a new... Um, a new um, space that I'm using, but um, also so to make myself really read it in depth, I would go and read that book anyway, Mind Magic. Um, anyway, middle of the week, Ace of Cups, new beginnings, one Ace, but this is reversed. So this is saying you might need to let go of someone or something. And remember, middle of the week, we have the last quarter moon as well, which is this crisis in consciousness. So um, you might need to let go of someone or something that you've got a bit of an emotional attachment to, and it might leave you feeling a bit vulnerable. And so uh, this is a reminder to go within ACE within to do that self-care the affirmation for this one is i cherish a healthy happy loving relationship with myself as i know that is the foundation of loving others and i can promise you that is so true it's um, once i realized that my whole life shifted perspective changed it wasn't selfish. It was filling my cup and then being having more love 
to put out in the world. Anyway, Knight of Cups, we finish the week with. Now, this one is about your privacy and boundaries that you want others to respect. This kind of feels like, you know, um, you could feel a little bit emotionally under pressure from some of this stuff that's happening, particularly um, um, as the week ends and as we approach this gem even stronger Gemini week, um, because Gemini is others and community. You could feel like, you know, somebody is kind of a little bit out to get you or manipulated. Um, so it could be somebody that you've put your trust in who reveals that they are a little bit not to be trusted. It's also a reminder to pay attention to new acquaintances or to put it at a simpler level as well. Uh, something I mentioned already, this could be a reminder not to engage in online debates with randoms. Because why? Does it achieve anything? No. I love a good snarky comment as much as anybody else, but don't. This is protect your boundaries, protect your emotions, which is cups, which is water. Go within and and really kind of, you know, as the dark moon approaches, then as we go into that dark of the moon, really kind of focus on your own emotional security and that self-care. So that's the week ahead. Oh, and boy, the week after, it's just like, oh, <laughs> You will need all the self-care you can get the week after. That doesn't mean it's not got tremendous potential and possibilities. It has. But this week is just a lead into that. That Mercury Uranus is kapow, ideas, light bulbs. That Mars with Chiron and then Eris is likely to bring up some headbutting. But don't be that person. Much love to you. Don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up, check out the nest, all those things. And I'll see you next week.